2025 is the year that you decided you wanted to up your productivity game. And I am sure you're already off to a great start. You're using to-do lists, you're turning focus mode on on your phone, and you finally, finally started the journal. And all of these things are amazing. And I really encourage you to continue to do all three of those things. But in this video, I wanted to just talk about some of my experiences and give you the landmines of software engineering that will absolutely kill your productivity. And if you're new here, I'm Andrew Peacock. This isn't me speaking from a high horse. This is me telling you as a software engineer who's been developing and leading development teams for over a decade now. And these things have absolutely crippled my software engineering productivity. So let's dive in. The first thing that's going to destroy your productivity, and honest to God, it may start a war on this one is your damn dual monitor setup. And look, I get it. All of the tech bros and your favorite streamer, they all have six different monitors, even to where they have a dedicated Spotify playlist monitor. And I'm sorry to tell you, but this is a bullshit strategy. And I used to be a victim of this. I remember having three 24 by 24 by 24 inch monitors. I felt on top of the world like I was in a battle station every time I sat down at my desk. And I'm not sure if I like just love the aesthetic of multiple monitors or whatever it was, even though like now that feels really claustrophobic, but I'm here to tell you that multiple monitors, while may mean more real estate, what it actually in reality turns out to be is more opportunities to be distracted. So here is your new year, new you homework. Unplug the extra monitors. Start with just your laptop screen if you need to, or just rock a single screen and screw the other two. And you don't even need to commit to this for a month. Just do it for a week. The first few days are gonna suck and you're gonna feel like, oh my God, where the hell do I put all this shit? What do I do? But I promise you, over a couple more days, you'll start to realize that you're just closing things out and you don't actually need to front all of the context all the time. And I'm willing to bet that if you actually do this and get past the first couple days of it being annoying, you will truly see a higher output as it allows you to get into real deep work. And this leads perfectly into my second point. And I will say it again and again and again, you will destroy your productivity if you don't actually use your calendar. The fact is that us humans, we just suck at context switching. And honestly, God, when I was younger, I felt like I was really good at context switching. I felt like I could move between things easily and then I was organized and then I was on top of my game but as I grew more and more senior and gained more experience, I realized that while I may be touching more different things, I'm just producing more bad quality. And it kind of sucks to admit that. But like I said, the truth is I was producing more, but I was producing more shit. So what do you do? Well, there are two primary ways that you can actually use your calendar and use your systems and tools in an effective manner. First and foremost, go ahead and block off all of the time in your calendar before your daily stand up. Look, reality is you don't actually need to help or talk with anybody before stand up. You can use that time to relax and start your day slowly, drink your coffee, work on something and focus on something that you actually want to work on. And the second time that you should block your calendar is for 60 to 90 minutes over your lunch break. Use this time to unwind, to go exercise, to eat lunch, to get away from the computer. Because reality is when you just try to smash your day with back to back to back meetings and you don't give yourself space to unload all of that cognitive crap that you were just holding, your latter half of your day is gonna be really damn unproductive. And pro tip, if you really wanna help yourself, walk for five to 10, 15 minutes right after you eat. It's good for your gut and it's gonna get you outside in the nature, away from the screens, away from the bells and whistles and notifications and give yourself space to actually dump, brain dump it all away. You don't need it anymore. That was the morning. That was old you and this is new you. Give yourself the time to get rid of it all. And I personally noticed when I started to do this, I have the ability to go back into the latter half of the day and genuinely go in deep focus again. The days that I have lunch meetings or I skip a workout or I don't get to talk with my wife as we go for a walk in the middle of the day, it sucks, like it really sucks. And by the end of the day, I feel burnt out. I feel drained. I don't wanna to go to work the next day. So give yourself 60 to 90 minutes and go do something for you. And the other major thing here is to make all of your prioritized work public and full transparency, like the calendar thing, I've been doing that for a while now. But this next bit here, I am taking directly from Cal Newport's new book, Deep Work. And if you haven't read it yet, I recommend it. It's a really good book. And if you want a video deep dive on deep work, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to make that for you. But anyways, make your list public. And honestly, for us software engineers, this is actually a really easy thing for us to do. We have Jira, we have Trello, Monday, whatever your team is using. Go and use the tool more. Put all of your work that you're doing into that that gear board. It shows your progress better, but it allows 
everybody to see it. Give access to your managers, to your colleagues, to your coworkers, whoever it is, your friends, I don't care. Give access to them so that they can see where and what you're prioritizing your time on. Because the reality is if your boss needs to interrupt you, they should at least know what they're interrupting. The other thing that you're currently working on may be a higher priority. And I think that's one of the major points that Cal Newport makes is everything is a trade-off. Not everything can be priority number one. So what are you trading? and it's easiest for you and asynchronizes a lot of your work if everyone just knows what you're up to. So thanks, Cal. I've started to integrate this in my own life and it has become super, super helpful. The last thing that will destroy your productivity is the technology itself. And this one burns to talk about because I'm a nerd. Like I love technology. I love smart homes, even though I don't have one, but I love watching videos on tech. I love all the new toys and the bells and whistles and it's a lot of fun. But damn, is it hard to walk away from the shiny tools? And that all said, I still believe that using some of these tools the right way does give you an actual productivity boost. And while I can't prescribe the tool or the process that you exactly should follow as it's individual to every one of us, what I can confidently say is that you need to start so ungodly, stupidly small. Start minimalism, start with whatever you want, because I cannot count the amount of times that I personally bounce between Notion, Apple products, Obsidian, Monday, Trello, all of these different tools just to go back and forth and chasing the new template, the new feature, the new AI this or that. And honest to God, I've spent more more time chasing templates than actually getting any of my work that the template's supposed to help me done. And I've really been stuck in this riptide. I've spent my own personal money on templates that are supposed to speed run and get me into this perfect strategy, you know, second brain type system. And it sounds great on paper, but the reality is I think I use maybe 10 or 20% of that system and the rest of it is just clunky, it's annoying, it's distracting, and it overwhelms what should be a simple thing and makes it a lot more difficult than it needs to. To be. So my real advice to actually be more productive is to stop chasing all of these fancy gadgets and fancy templates and just start simple. A single folder, a single page. Honest to God, that's all you need for a lot of things. All of these tools offer searchability within a document. So what's wrong with one long document? And most importantly, when you start integrating with these new tools, only pull on new tools when you need new processes, not a minute before. And if you do this, I promise it'll help keep you relieved. It won't overwhelm you. You'll actually continue to use the tool and not bounce between anything. So those are some of the landmines that I've personally suffered with that have tanked my productivity as a software engineer. And I hope you can take that, configure it, iterate on it, add to it so that you too can actually get more out of your day and enjoy what you're doing. And if you have any pro tips or anything that you absolutely love or honestly absolutely hate, let us know in the comments down below. I love hearing from each and every one of you. Go do something amazing this week. I appreciate you. And with that, I will see you next week. Peace.